So I was disappointed to see that Republicans had decided to effectively cancel the first day of the Republican National Convention just because of some tropical storm and the problems it's creating. But, God willing, they will make the best use possible of the other three nights. Now, today, on that point, I want to talk about uh, how to effectively counter the lies that the Democrats and their left-wing surrogates in the media are propagating about health care, specifically Medicare and Obamacare. You've probably heard that Obamacare cut $716 billion out of Medicare. Obama has cut $716 billion from Medicare. Yes, there you go. Now, let's talk about those cuts. We can argue about whether or not reduction below the CBO baseline, even if there is still a net increase in spending on a specific program, is technically a cut. But, all that aside, it is going to reduce Medicare spending by $716 billion over the next decade, if fully implemented. Now, here's what Doug Elmendorf, the director of the CBO, said in a letter to House Speaker John Boehner. Obamacare effectively reduces payments to many Medicare providers relative to what the government would have paid under prior law. And he writes that on the basis of those cuts in May rates and the existing sustainable growth rate mechanism that governs Medicare's payments to physicians, CBO projects that Medicare spending will increase significantly more slowly during the next two decades than it has increased during the past two decades. So that sounds good, right? We're going to slow the growth in Medicare spending, which is on track to bankrupt us very soon. Incidentally, that's the same thing that Paul Ryan proposed doing, albeit in different ways, in the many different reform plans he's put out over the years, and the Democrats accused him of... Getting rid of Medicare. Yes, exactly. Thank you, young man. Now, here's the deal about this reduction in Medicare spending. This brings me to something Ed Rendell said, but it's something that the Democrats have been saying a lot. I'm just using him as an example. When the president cuts Medicare, he's cutting it on the provider side. Most of those cuts were cuts to what the drug companies could make by supplying drugs to Medicare. When the Republicans make cuts to Medicare, they're cutting it on the beneficiary side. Okay, now, there's a truth and a lie in what he just said there that I want to highlight. It is true that the Medicare cuts affected by Obamacare are cuts in provider payments, effectively reimbursement payments to health care providers. <clears throat> this chart actually is a good breakdown. Now you can see most of the cuts are achieved from Medicare Advantage, that really popular program that Democrats hate, and also in payments to healthcare providers, like hospitals specifically. So it's true that the Medicare cuts in Obamacare are cuts on the provider side, not on the beneficiary side, but did you notice he said that like it's a good thing? I mean... <laughs> I agree that it's politically less toxic to cut provider reimbursement payments than to cut benefits, but it's actually worse, and here's why. A lot of healthcare providers, hospitals and clinics, don't even take Medicare, and a lot fewer will accept Medicare patients, patients whose only means of payment is through Medicare, if this law is fully implemented. And let's get to the lie. The lie he told was that the Republican plan cuts benefits, which is a lie. I mean, it's, I, this is the great thing. I don't have to put forth any evidence of that because th there is no evidence that the Republican plan cuts benefits. So 
that's pretty much all I need to say on that. Now, another lie the Democrats are telling is that these $716 billion in cuts are going to extend the life of the Medicare trust fund. They... Oh, we extended the life of Medicare uh, by uh, eight years, according to the Congressional uh, Budget Office. Yes, all right. That is what Democrats are claiming. The problem is, and to illustrate this point, this is something I think Republicans should do. Go online to the CBO's website and find the document entitled Estimates for the Insurance Coverage Provisions of the Affordable Care Act updated for the recent Supreme Court decision. And, and the last two pages of this document are tables. And if you look at this one, table four, it's labeled Estimate of the Budgetary Effects of the Insurance Coverage Provisions Contained in the Affordable Care Act updated for Supreme Court decision. Okay. Then this chart, actually, these last two pages, I think that Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney should print off thousands of copies of these and just hand them out at rallies so that they can refer to them while speaking on the stump and people can look at them. Because here's what they need to call attention to, one of the things. Down here where it says net cost of coverage provisions, it shows that, and again, this is the CBO's estimate, and if you've seen my blog, then you should know the Congressional Budget Office has a very poor track record for predicting these things. But it projects that over the next decade, the cost of these additional coverage provisions in Obamacare is going to cost the federal government nearly $1.2 trillion. Now... I have seen and heard people on the left excoriate Republicans and conservatives for citing this $1.2 trillion figure, and basically their complaint is that we're trying to mislead people into thinking that Obamacare will increase the deficit. Well, that's not exactly true. We're, we're just saying how much, in part, Obamacare is going to cost. And the reason that the Democrats claim that Obamacare won't reduce the deficit is in part because they are paying for that with all of these new taxes and tax increases in Obamacare, but also with that $716 billion that's taken out of Medicare that is trimmed from Medicare over the next 10 years. Yet they're claiming that that same $716 billion we extended the life of Medicare uh, by uh, eight years. Yeah. See, they can't have it both ways. Either that $716 billion is going to pay for these other coverage provisions and all of this new spending in Obamacare, or it's going to prolong the life of the Medicare trust fund. Of course, to do that, all that money would have to be put back in the Medicare trust fund, which is actually what Paul Ryan has proposed doing. And yes, he used the $716 billion figure. I think what Romney and Ryan should just say on the campaign trail is that whatever savings we can achieve through reforms, rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse in Medicare over the next 10 years will be plowed right back into the trust fund. See, the con that the Obama administration is trying to pull on the American electorate is trying to convince us that Obamacare won't add to the deficit and at the same time say that these provisions have added eight years to the life of the Medicare trust fund. They can't have it both ways. And in fact, I think the truth is that it's $716 billion that is taken out of Medicare to pay for these other coverage provisions. So it's not going to prolong the life of the Medicare trust fund at all. I am very tired.
and I think we will pick up on this in a future video, but for now, I just want to encourage you, check out my blog. Follow me on Twitter, at Right Wing Genius, and also don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Share this with your friends and colleagues and family, etc. As always, don't mess with the Right Wing Genius.